Hello. We're going to talk about multinuclear NMR. You've already really done that in some ways, but we'll look at it in a little more detail. So basically multinuclear NMR is anything that's not proton NMR. So when you've been doing carbon NMR or any other things, you've already looked at other nuclei. But we'll just take a quick look. Some of the things you need to look at before you do multinuclear NMR is to look at isotopic abundance. So remember, carbon-13 is a little harder to see because it's only about 1% abundant. Um, most, and 90 some percent of a random sample of, of molecule, organic compound has um, mostly carbon-12. So carbon-13 is not very abundant. It's one of the reasons that we've had to develop other techniques. Uh, but there's a variety of nuclei that have high abundance. So fluorine is one, phosphorus. We'll look at a few phosphorus NMR. Um, rhodium. There's some more that if you run more scans or different techniques, you can get good spectra, tin. I think there's some tin spectra in your workbook for practice, selenium. And there's some in canvas practice for tin as well, I believe. Um, so a variety of them, a few are very low abundance and that's nitrogen. So you'll see in nitrogen NMR, if you move on and do the 3D NMR or other types of biological NMR, people will ha usually have to make enriched samples before they can run the spectrum. Then you have to look at sensitivity. Some nuclei are not very sensitive and you look at the spin. So this uh, PowerPoint and the, one of your learning outcomes is multinuclear NMR with a spin of a half. So everything we've done so far, carbon-13, proton, have a spin of a half. So we'll take a quick look at some of the effects of this. And then in the next video, we'll look at somewhere we have spin larger than a half. So carbon-13 actually will couple with the proton. Um, we act, and we run that decoupled. Because So here's a classic carbon, which has been decoupled. So if we look at the sp3 region, we have three carbon peaks. And so here's the one next to the oxygen. Here's your one that's between the carbonyl and the aromatic ring. And here's your methyl. That's a decoupled, so you get three singlets. But if you do the coupling, you would see, for example, that this methyl um, should be N plus one, because it will couple to all three of the hydrogens bonded to it. So it's a quartet. So this is the C H3 and it's N plus one. So that's a quartet. This is the CH2 over here and it's bonded to two hydrogens. So this is a CH2 and this one's a CH2. It's a triplet as well. And it's the one next to the oxygen. So the, the thing to note here is we did all of that work doing depth to figure out how many hydrogens are on each carbon when we could just run the spectrum without decoupling it so that you could see this. However, the J values in carbon to hydrogen, that one bond coupling, so this is carbon hydrogen one bond coupling, and those are huge, 100 to 250 hertz. And so if you look at this, this works because these are, in this spectrum, 15 parts per million apart from each other. And so I happen to get one here where these are not overlapping. But in many spectra, this is almost impossible because the peaks will start to overlap with each other and you can't pull apart the coupling. So it's a lot easier and more effective to instead run the decoupled carbon spectrum, and then run the depth to get the coupling information. So phosphorus NMR is one where you will actually um, use the coupling values for it. Although it's often run, and note this, this means I'm observing the proton, and, or the phosphorus, and the proton is decoupled. If it's in these brackets, it's decoupled. So this is a phosphorus NMR that is decoupled. So it's, the coupling that I see is phosphorus-phosphorus. So you can often see 
two to three bonds with phosphorus, phosphorus, just like proton, proton. So if we look at this, we're not seeing the coupling to the proton. We're just seeing the coupling to the phosphoruses. So this phosphorus can see both of those two, and each of these are the same. So those two will see that one. So these phosphoruses here will be a doublet because they see that one. So they, if we call this A, this is A. And it's a doublet because it sees one other phosphorus that's different than it, and N plus one. This one, B, sees two phosphoruses, and so it's a triplet. So this is phosphorus B. Okay. So this is a proton NMR where, um, oh, sorry, this is a phosphorus NMR. The next one's going to be a proton NMR where the, we de haven't decoupled it. So it's important when you're looking at these spectra to make sure you have different coupling constants. So the phosphorus hydrogen one bond coupling is huge all the way up to possibly 700 Hertz. So if I'm in the phosphorus, if I only have one phosphorus, so this is one peak um, because I'm only observing one phosphorus atom and then I'm looking at the coupling. So in red, this is the phosphorus to hydrogen coupling in red, and that's 691 hertz. So that makes this a doublet. But it also is reaching out to these hydrogens. And that's one, two, three bond coupling, which is about five to 10 hertz. In this case, it's 8.9 hertz. And so there's one, two, three, four equivalent hydrogens. So it's one, two, three, four, five. So this is a doublet of pentets or quintets. Uh, because we're looking at that one phosphorus. So in the next one, we're going to look at the same molecule, but we'll look at the proton NMR. And so now we've got three possible peaks. Let me put him, them here because I have three different types of protons. So this one will couple to that phosphorus with a very large coupling, remember, 691 hertz. So this is proton A and it's a doublet because it sees the one phosphorus. This one, B, and there's two of them, would normally be a quartet because it is next to the methyl. So you see the coupling to C, but you also see the coupling over to the phosphorus. So this is a doublet of quartets. So you can kind of see that in here. One, two, three, two, four. And then this would be the other quartet. They're all, they're overlapping each other. And you have a coupling constant of seven hertz and a coupling constant of nine hertz. Um, so you can measure that out because one of them is to the quartet and the other is the doublet. So the doublet here is seven hertz. That's your, um, this one. And this is the nine hertz. And then over here, we have the C, put the B there. And this is too far, that's four bonds from the phosphorus. So you just see the typical proton, proton, three bond coupling, J, three H. So you have to remember when you're doing this to look at the size of the coupling constants and remember which atom you're looking at. Here, we're looking at protons and you have to look at both proton to proton and proton to hydrogen coupling. In the previous one, we looked at the phosphorus NMR. So do some practice. There's some in Canvas. There's some more in your workbook.